We have made it through another week together, a truly historic week. This is something we have not seen in modern times. Life in this country uh, really changing in unimaginable ways, very likely for several weeks, if not months to come. Tonight, the number of cases of the coronavirus has now soared past 17,000, one third of those cases here in New York City. At least 200 dead. Again, they think this is much higher than number of cases in this country. Of course, the testing still catching up and will likely reflect that number. Tonight, President Trump saying, quote, we will win this war, confirming he has invoked that Korean War era law that allows the president to ask manufacturers to produce needed medical supplies. But has he asked for those supplies to be made? What he's saying tonight? The president is also asked about the potential for a nationwide lockdown. And you'll hear what the president said about that. The U.S. tonight tightening the border, imposing new restrictions on non-essential travel between the U.S. and Mexico. Of course, those restrictions already in place with Canada. And states taking extraordinary action in this country. First, California's governor ordering the state's 40 million people to stay home. And we saw those images, highways empty today. Tonight, news that New York's governor has issued something very similar, tightening workplace restrictions as well, now ordering non-essential businesses to close and that public transportation only be used for an emergency. The governor also calling ventilators what missiles were to World War II and what the health commissioner revealed in New York today. The demand for testing tonight, the National Guard arriving before dawn to help set up one of New Jersey's first drive-through testing sites. And within hours, police were turning people, were turning families away. Tonight, right here, the new data about who is most at risk, the warning from the World Health Organization for younger people, and the difference between men and women and what... And South Korea's military says the DPRK has fired two unidentified projectiles off the east coast into the sea. They're presumed to be short-range ballistic missiles. Similar exercises have taken place at least twice earlier this month. On Friday, DPRK leader Kim Jong-un supervised an artillery firing competition to evaluate his country's readiness for combat. Seoul has called on Pyongyang to stop such military demonstrations saying they're very inappropriate given the world is struggling with the COVID-19 pandemic. Overseas the numbers from Italy tonight only worsening in fact this was the number today 627 people dying in just the past 24 hours the worst yet. So tonight here we're going to take you inside the hospital at the epicenter of their outbreak. We warn you it's difficult but it's also a warning for what doctors on the front lines could soon face here. Maggie Rooley from London tonight. Tonight, a glimpse inside a nightmare. A race to save lives in the Italian hospital at the epicenter of the deadliest coronavirus outbreak in the world. And this is just the emergency ward, not the intensive care unit. The ICU is already overwhelmed. Those plastic bubble helmets are connected to ventilators to help the gasping patients breathe. This hospital is one of the most advanced in Europe, but the victims are everywhere, on gurneys, in waiting rooms, in hallways. It's a very severe pneumonia.